Hi, and welcome to Physics High. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of the concept of dynamics. Now, in some previous videos, I've given you overviews of mechanics, which is basically the umbrella topic between kinematics and dynamics, and I've also done an introduction to kinematics. And so what is dynamics? Well, kinematics really is the study of motion per se. So we're interested in displacement, velocity, acceleration, all within reference of terms of time. Whereas dynamics looks at the motion and the underlying causes behind them. So today I'm going to give you a sort of a Newtonian understanding, or as Isaac Newton developed it, in terms of what dynamics is. And I'm going to draw a little bit of a concept map here on my board. So let's start. Now dynamics can be really broken down into three key areas. And the first we're going to look at is forces. The second area we're going to be looking at is the concept of momentum. And lastly, we're going to look at the concept of energy. So let's first elaborate what I mean by forces. Now, first of all, forces generally have been categorized into one of two categories. The first is what we refer to as contact forces and the other non-contact. Now, so we talk about forces such as if you push a block across a surface, there's a contact force. And when we talk about non-contact forces, for example, magnets that attract and repel, when we have gravity and so forth. Again, I want to make the point here, we're talking about a Newtonian understanding. When we talk about forces, though, we can also break it down into different types. And there are many types of forces we can elaborate on. There is gravity, applied, normal, and friction. So generally speaking, in middle school, lower high school levels, this is how we often use as examples of forces. So we have a gravitational force, which is a non-contact force. We have applied forces, normal forces, and frictional forces, which are examples of contact forces. And then what we do is we look at the underlying laws that govern these forces. And of course, this is what Isaac Newton did in his famous uh, book called Principia. And we are dealing here what we refer to as the laws of motion. Now, there are three laws of motion that you will cover in dynamics. The first and the second and the third, which I'm just going to briefly describe without going into great detail. There's the first law, which is basically an object will stay at rest or move at constant velocity unless acted on by an external force. And often this is related to the concept of inertia. Then there's the second law. And of course, the second law basically is the relationship that often people write as F is equal to MA. But really what it's saying is, is that the acceleration is dependent, directly proportional in fact, to the net force acting on that object and indirectly proportional to the mass of that object. That's really what that means. And then of course is the third law, which talks about really that the force of A on B is equal to in magnitude of the force of B on A, but the negative here suggests that the force is in the opposite direction. If I apply a force on something in that direction, then it applies an equal and opposite force in the opposite direction. So that sort of summarizes the concept of force. Let's now move on the concept of momentum. Now, very basically, momentum is going to be simply a formula that is going to be say that P is equal to mv. So in other words, an object has momentum because it has a velocity and it also has a mass. But we need to go really further because ultimately when we apply forces on objects, then we are changing its momentum. And so what we say is that the change in momentum, which is often referred to as the impulse, is actually due to the force multiplied by the time that that force is applied. Now what you can see is that there is a linkage here. So this change of momentum is actually related to the aspect of the second law. And in fact, it was Isaac Newton that described the second law in terms of the momentum. In essence, Isaac Newton described the second law not like this, but as the rate of change of momentum, which is a slight rearrangement of that particular formula. The other concept that's really important in understanding momentum, and I'll just basically put a dotted line here, is the law of the conservation of momentum. Now, what is that? Well, in essence, this is actually related to 
a connection here with Newton's third law. That is, if I apply a force on A and A applies a force on B, then both objects have a change in momentum. And so what happens is that the total momentum in a closed system remains constant. Now, what is a closed system? Well, in essence, it's where there are no external forces acting on that system. But that's the law of conservation of momentum. And it is one of the, what we refer to as the conservation laws and a very, very important principle in physics overall. So there's momentum and there's forces. And now what we can do is we can start discussing energy. First thing to realize is that when we talk about energy, we're actually more interested in changes in energy. And changes in energy can occur in one of two ways. The first is what we refer to as a transfer of energy. And the other one is a transformation of energy. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, if we have energy moving from one thing to another, and it's still the same form of energy, we say it's a transfer of energy. When you heat up your, let's say, water to make a cup of tea, we have the heat of the elements going into the water, and that's a transfer of energy. But what we're really interested in is the concept of transformation, where energy changes from one form to the other. So again, in that example, we have electrical energy causing your stove to heat up, we have a change of type of energy. And so therefore that's referred to as a transformation. And related to this concept of transformation energy is the concept of work. And so work is really when you actually have a change or a transformation of energy. And as a result, you change the energy of that particular object. Now that again, that concept of work, again, is applied to a concept of forces. How do I do work? Well, I have to apply a force over a certain displacement and therefore change its energy. And so we do work on the system by applying a force. So you can see automatically we have a connection to forces again. Now I've discussed already some types of energy and I want to uh, flesh those out. Now, generally speaking, energy is an energy somehow stored in the system or it's actually, uh, actually doing something. And the first type of energy we often refer to is kinetic. In essence, what we're saying here is an object has energy by way of its motion. So if I have an object that is moving at a particular velocity, it has kinetic energy. Other forms of energy that we describe as light, heat, sound, and electric electrical. So all of those actually are different types of energy, but in essence, there is some sort of motion along with them. So in essence, all of these can be classified in some way connected, connected to kinetic. That is, we have some sort of motion involved. In fact, sound, of course, is vibrational motion of air molecules or particles. And as a result, it is actually, in one sense, also kinetic. So this dotted line could actually be an all encompassing thing in terms of kinetic energy. But we can also have energy as it is stored in what we often refer to as a field. And I'll talk about those. So in essence, when we have that, we can talk about, for example, gravitational. There is elastic. There is chemical. And there's nuclear. Now, all of these examples are actually stored energies. And so what we do is we actually refer to these as potential energy. So we have gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy, chemical and nuclear potential energy. But in fact, electrical actually can also be described in terms of potential as well. And so what we can do is we can group all of these here as our potential energy types. A quick review, we have our forces, we have our momentum, we have our energy, and obviously the energy is broken down into these components. Now, right at the get-go, I did say to you, this is a Newtonian understanding, and although this is a good description of dynamics, there are some limitations to what I have here. So at the start of the 20th century, we have 
modern physics taking place. And that really started off with Planck with uh, understanding of the black body radiation and then into Einstein with looking at both photoelectric effect but also his understanding of motion particularly in terms of what we now know as the theory of relativity. And of course that can be divided up into two areas. One is the special theory of relativity and one is the general theory of relativity. And as a result, some of this needs to be adjusted. The first aspect that I wanna talk about is the fact that when we look at special theory of relativity, then the momentum of an object is not just simply due to a change in its velocity. As Einstein discovered is that the momentum of the object therefore can actually not be directly proportional to its velocity and because there's a concept of what we call momentum dilation. So when I have this situation here, you need to be mindful here that special relativity undercuts this to some degree because ultimately at extremely high speeds, this formula doesn't work. This model is fine for slow speeds, but not really good for speeds as we approach the speed of light. So that's the first limitation there. The other limitation is this concept of gravity. Now gravity is described as a force, but it is problematic in that it doesn't explain certain things. For example, the uh, precession of Mercury around the sun. And so we have general relativity that gives us a better understanding of what gravity is, which is a distortion of space-time, not actually a force. And so again, our understanding of gravity needs to be modified. Great to work this as a model in basic situations, but again, when we look at the pushing our understanding to the limits, then gravity really isn't best described as a force. Going here to the contact or non-contact forces. The point is here is that our understanding of forces is really basically built on four fundamental forces as described by the standard model. So we have these four fundamental forces. Now, they are sometimes also described as three fundamental forces. They are basically gravity, and now it's connected there to general relativity again. We have also electromagnetic forces, and then we have the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force, though these are now combined into an electroweak force. The point here is, is that all our forces that we've discussed here can be described by those four fundamental forces. And in essence, it's about the interaction of fields, which means there is no contact actually involved. Uh, basically, we know that if I drop an object, the force is exerted on my object and it falls, but there's no physical contact because the object is within the gravitational field. Well, it's the same if I were to slap my face, you could say, well, is there contact there? No, but at the molecular level at the levels of the electrons there's a repulsion of my electrons of my skin here to my hand and so there is again a interaction of fields but there's no actual physical contact and so therefore our understanding with the standard model really means that there's no such thing as contact forces only non-contact forces. And finally the whole concept of energy being somehow separated from everything else also belies the fact that there is actually a connection between one important variable about this whole concept here that ties in with energy. And you know what that is? Well, again, all of this mechanics, kinematics and dynamics is about the motion of particles and those particles therefore, by definition, have a concept called mass. But what we understand now is that mass and energy are actually interchangeable. They are actually the same thing. You could argue that mass is simply energy compacted. And we know that this mass here that is related to our momentum and what it basically forces act on really is connected to the concept of energy by E equals mc squared. That is, that is the energy within an object's mass stationary mass in this particular case. In other words, the energy stored in the fact that it, uh, of, of its particles. Well, I hope that has been helpful for you and given you an understanding of dynamics as it fits under the umbrella of mechanics. Please like, share and subscribe. Hit that bell so that you get my latest updates. Why don't you check out also my podcast where I interview science communicators and scientists and ask them what drives their passion for science. And please consider supporting me via Patreon. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.